Have you been born again? Do you know what it means to be born again or filled with the Holy Spirit? To be born again means to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost or to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, turned uh, into a new creation. There's lots of ways in the Bible that this is described. The first real example of this is in Acts chapter 2, verse 36 to 41. And Peter is addressing a large group of his Jewish brethren. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now then, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts, and they said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what should we do? Peter turned to them and said, This is everything you need to know. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises to you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as our Lord God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day were added to them three thousand souls. So I don't want to get into a long theological debate over whether being filled with the Holy Spirit is a, a prerequisite or requirement of salvation. Because if you are a Christian, if you are saved, and if you truly, deep down in your heart, believe in God the Father and Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that he died for your sins and that he rose from the dead on the third day and ascended to heaven, then you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and you will want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You will want to be born again. It doesn't matter if it's a, a requirement of salvation or not. It's a requirement for every other aspect of your Christian walk. So I'm telling you now from first-hand experience, it is an undeniable, unforgettable, life-changing experience. It is the difference between a fruitful Christian and a fruitless Christian. Being filled with the Spirit of God and subsequently walking in the Spirit, being empowered and led by God to live a victorious life, resisting temptation, overcoming sin, having a hunger for God, the desire for God, seeing miracles, being able to heal people, having a fire to witness and to evangelize to people, and those people being moved by your words. The key to all of this is being born again and being filled with the Holy Spirit. If you're already saved, but have never, or at least in your memory, had an experience of being filled with the Holy Spirit, then I'm going to explain to you what you need to do to be filled with the Holy Spirit. As Peter said to them so well, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Fortunately, whether this is the very first time you're being filled with the Holy Spirit and you're being born again, or if you already received the Holy Spirit many years ago, perhaps even as a child, and you might have forgotten about it or not be sure. Luckily for you, the process is exactly the same either way. The main difference between your first experience and subsequent fillings of the Spirit is the intensity of the experience. When you were born again, the first time you believe and repent and are baptized and are filled with the Holy Spirit, it's very intense because prior to that, you were dead, you were empty. If the first time this happens is when you were an adult, you will know about it and you certainly won't forget it. For me, it was a, a very sudden thing, um, an infilling of power, overflowing of, of joy, of love for God, pouring into my heart like living water, an overwhelming infilling of, of patience and filling into my body, down into my legs, into my arms. And I was overcome with the presence of God. I found myself thanking and worshiping God and thanking Jesus. And my whole life was changed from that moment. My desires changed, my priorities in life changed, my actions and behavior. I had an insatiable desire for God. I was consuming the word. All I wanted to do is to be you know, speaking about God, thinking about Jesus and, and finding more about him, drawing closer to him, wanting to please him. Now, if you are a long time Christian and have never experienced anything quite so intense or life changing as that, 
I don't want you to be discouraged in any way. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is not a one-time thing. It is a day-to-day -day essential to living a victorious Christian life of freedom. And again, the process is exactly the same, whether it's your first time or your 5,000th time of being filled with the Spirit. So the steps are, you want to get baptized if you've not yet been baptized, but assuming you have. One, pray to the Father. Two, ask him to remind you of the sins that you need to confess and to be cleansed of in order to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Three, confess those sins to God, just alone, quietly in prayer. Confess your sins to God. Four, repent of those sins. Now, that can be the hardest part for many of us. And fifth is repeating steps two to four until you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Asking God again, you know, what other sins, what other unconfessed sins have I got that I need to repent of before you to be filled. This is the most important part. and It's, it's crucial that you really understand it. So you're gonna get in a quiet place, no distractions, one-on-one -on -one with God, okay? Close your eyes and say, Father God, please show me the sins that I must confess and repent of to be cleansed and filled with your Holy Spirit. And then immediately, God will answer that. Straight away, you will hear the quiet, still voice of God in your mind saying, a sin. It could be, you might hear lies, or you might hear anger, wrath, jealousy, uh, lust. So you, you're asking again, more things will come up into your memory. You'll confess them to God, thank him that you're forgiven, repent, turn away from them, uh, grieve them, see them for what they are, that they are sin, and in your heart, turn away from them. If you're coming into this process as a previously as a non-believer or an atheist or from another religion. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit and born again, you will know about it. Look forward to it. It will be the greatest day of your life and you remember it forever. If you've already been a Christian for many years and perhaps received the Holy Spirit as a child, you will experience a, a refilling or a stirring up of the gift that is within you, as Paul puts it in his letter to Timothy. As you confess your sins and repent of them, and clean away all the layers of stuff that's blocking your relationship with God and the fullness of the Spirit. As they get these layers get removed, you will slowly feel your flesh diminish and you will be filled with, with love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, faith, humility, kindness and self-control. You will experience this expanding out from your heart as the Holy Spirit within you fills and takes over your body. You will feel the gentle presence of God guiding you and you will be able to hear God's quiet, still voice in your mind and in your heart. Think of it like this. If you are already a believer, you have a connection to God through Jesus Christ. Your light shines out. Jesus talks about how we are the light of the world and we should let our light shine before men and to not hide it under a basket. So when as a Christian you commit sin, we grieve the Holy Spirit and dirt gets smeared across that light and the light grows dimmer. Through confessing our sins and most importantly repenting of them, God then cleanses them, cleaning that light and restoring that connection between us and God. So for a long time believer, being filled with the Spirit again can feel like a gradual growing of uh, reconnecting with God over the course of how long your praying and repenting takes, uh, maybe 30 minutes or an hour, depending on your backlog. Um, depends how long it takes God to show you all your unconfessed sins and for you to truly repent of them. If these are sins that you're not particularly willing to repent of or able at this moment, this process may take a long time. You may not be able to be filled with the Holy Spirit for, for months or years uh, due to your love for these particular sins until your spiritual brokenness, your lack of connection with God or events in life humbling you, eventually bringing you back to real repentance for these sins. Certain seasons of our life, you may be so tied up in your sin and in love with these certain sins, you may feel lost from God for a long time 
but he has never turned away from you. We only turn away from him. Like in the parable of the prodigal son, he is always joyously waiting for our return with open arms. It is a case of us turning back to him and away from sin. So that's it. The process is the same, whether for a new believer in Christ or someone who's been a Christian their whole lives. Get alone, speak to the Father, pray to God and ask him to remind you and tell you, show you your unconfessed sins that are preventing you from being filled with the Holy Spirit. You will see them, he'll bring them into memory. It may be just a word, or the name of the sin, or he might show you what you did. Confess that to God, admit that you see that he's right, you see that it's a sin. Confess the sin, lay it down, and thank God that you're forgiven for that, those sins because of the blood of Jesus Christ that was spilled for you. Jesus died for your sins, he's paid the price. And then upon seeing that sin, seeing if what it is, repent of that sin. Realize it's not good for you. God does not want that for you and that you want to be, that you want your connection with God. You want to be filled with the, yeah, the Holy Spirit more than you are enjoying indulging in this sin. Repent from the sin. Just commit truly in your heart. God's not, it's not about performance. It is about your heart. God knows we can't be perfect. He knows we stumble, but he wants God sees our heart. He wants us to turn away from it. God wants us to see these sins as he sees them. It is only with the power of the Holy Spirit, with the power of God living in you and guiding you, that you'll ever have the strength to resist these sins anyway. You can't do this on your own. So you need to repent and confess and be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit so you can then go on living victoriously and have the power to resist these sins. You can't do it in the flesh. You cannot resist the temptation of the flesh. If we had the strength within our flesh to live a victorious life, then Jesus died in vain. God knew we couldn't do it. That was the whole point that Jesus had to come. He had to come and pay the price for our sins so we could be forgiven and so the Holy Ghost could come. We could be translated into the kingdom of God and indwelt with the Holy Ghost to have power to overcome sins and live a victorious life through Christ. He didn't die for our sins so we could carry and live in the same way still live as slaves to sin he came to set us free if the son of man sets you free you shall be free indeed so pray to god confess repent be cleansed and be filled with the holy spirit of god only then will you have the power to resist temptation and live the way that jesus christ wants us to live in freedom amen if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it in the future then click the subscribe button beneath this video and you'll get a notification when i post new content